I stand here as a grandmother to a nanny, a grandmother in pain. And I can see and feel in every one of us here, there's so much pain in the air. We are all wounded. Some of us are extremely angry. Others are confused. Others are asking questions. One thing is common, we all are in pain. This child has left us. And I can say with no fear that she took a little bit of each one of us. It's not only pain. It's not only angry, anger. It also this sense of loss, of feeling that we are no longer who we were before she was taken from us. But Uineni, I think in the presence of all of you, have to remain. I want to say, she has to be in our hearts, in our minds. I'm not saying not to let her go in the sense of giving her rest. But I'm saying this should not be just one beautiful celebration as we're having here. I must say I've been chancellor at UCT. I have never seen such a beautiful gathering like this. And this has to mean something. For her to remain with us, it means each and every one of us has to pledge to do something, absolutely something, to make of this country of ours a country which is safe. We heard here, Uneni was not abducted in the campus. She was at the post office, right? She could have been in a mall. She could have been simply walking. She could be anywhere in public space or even in a private space. Our reality is we are a society where women and children, by the way, are not safe anywhere. Something absolutely and deeply wrong is happening in our society. Yes, the university will take all the measures to make sure that all students and faculty, everyone at the university is safe. We will do that. It's our responsibility. Yes, the minister was saying we'll work in all campus and we'll do everything we can as government, as police, and the judges, etc. But the problem, it's not the consequences of what's happening. It's the root causes of why and how we got to the point where we are as a society. That's the question which these deaths more than any, and it happened here in this institution, which is considered to be one of the best institutions in the country, the best institution in Africa. It has to begin here to ask the hard questions, and more importantly, to contribute to find answers, which are going to contribute for then whoever, whether you are government, whether you are mother or grandmother, as I am, wherever you are, take responsibility to make our society safe and to make our children safe, all of them, with no exception. How? 
you know what? I'm over 70. And I started my struggle at the age of 20-something. Uh, I had so high, very high dreams about my country and my Africa. And then we come to this age where I'm planning now, you know, to go somewhere else where I think I'll have really peace. And you say, what has happened? Where did we fail? How do we start to rebuild the social fabric of our societies? Where do we start and how? I want to make a pledge. I didn't speak to the vice chancellor. And perhaps it's rude that I'm making this pledge when I'm leaving and Precious is the one who is going to take over. But because we have here some of the best, very best social scientists, psychologists, anthropologists, psychiatrists, you can name it. They are here. Uh -uh. In the name of this child, in the name of this child, we have to start a program in which we really interrogate, interrogate the real causes of where we are and how we got to this point. We have to join hands with other institutions and ask the question, what is happening that our families are nurturing murderers and rapists? It is in our families. It's not in our classes. What is it? which has gone so wrong. Yes, we could say the cases it was mentioned here of people in the privacy of their homes who have suffered exactly the same kind of gruesome death like you nene. So, uh -uh. if we are here in solidarity, with this beauty of unity. In our pain, we have to pledge to do something. So the university will do. We'll find its own way. The minister is here, he made some pledges. Uh-uh, we really have to sit down and do something which we can be accountable about it. Perhaps this can also help if I tell you. I am a mother of a girl who lost an eye to gender violence. Beautiful girl. She had beautiful eyes. Actually, it was the best I liked in her face. And then someone like the rapist, raised his hand against her. But let me tell you what a kind of a girl she is. In my pain and crying, she comes to me and says, you know, mom, we are lucky. I said, what do you mean we are lucky? She said, yes, we are lucky because I'm alive. I'm here. I have one eye. I can see you and I can see my children. Many have succumbed and they died instantly. So we are lucky. I'm so pained that Unen was not lucky, like my child. Because she would be standing here in this campus. She could actually be one of those champions as you say, she was so infectious in her energy and love. She would continue to do this. And I'm feeling like we, we just don't, don't have to be simply overwhelmed with our pain. We have to commit. Girls, all of you girls here, 
you have to, 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 to reflect how do you protect each other. It has to start here. If you need to learn how to work and where at what time and places where you should never be alone, you have to decide how you reorganize your routine in this camp to protect one another. Yes, we can have police, we can have, a, we can have some kind of a protection, but this protection has to start each one of you, two of you, three of you, ten of you, all of you together. We cannot succumb to this and feel we are powerless. This is one. We girls, sometimes we have boyfriends who are abusive. Oh, because I love him. I will forgive him. Yes, because they have been forgiven many times. That's exactly when they end killing. You have to have the strength to say, the moment the signs come, get out of that relationship. And you will not do it alone if you don't have your friends and your sisters to support you to say, yes, get out of the relationship. We'll be with you. We will support you. Boys. 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 Yes, boys, you are here in this campus equally like the girls who come for knowledge, for science, to have the tools for your own life. Boys, boys, yes, respect girls. Respect girls the same way you respect your sister. These boys would be able to kill someone if he abused his sister. But they are abusers of other sisters, please. <laughs> boys. No. And we all look at those who have sexual orientation, which is different from ours. And we feel we are much more the right people, they are in the wrong. There's no right and wrong in this. You are. That's all. Let's protect one another. Boys and girls, straight or not, let's protect our one, one another. And we have to learn how to do it. You do not know, I also do not know. But you have to learn to protect one another. So that we are not here when in our anger to say, the management of university has to do. Yes, the management of university has a lot to do. But the management of university will not be in our libraries where we go, everywhere where we go. That's why we have to protect one another. It's a mutual responsibility. I'm here. I tell you, I'm really in pain. And when I'm in pain, I'm not the right person to be speaking. But what I want to say to you is this is really a deeply rooted crisis of our family structures. It's where we, begin, we, we started. We saw it happening. And we have no clarity on how we nurture, we educate our children to love and respect one another. And that a man is a human being. A woman is a human being. And in that, there is no, they, they are different in their beauty. In what, I mean, nature has put them to be. But it, there is no a criteria of value to say because you are a woman, you, have, you value less. And it is in our families which this problem also have to be addressed. It is, a, yes, it was mentioned in our churches, it is, has to be in our community, wherever we are, at workplace. But yes, we have really to be much more aggressive much more aggressive in naming and put the picture, everyone to know. Because if you put the name only, the name won't tell much. Make them be afraid of walking in public spaces because, yes. And this is society which has to do. 
make rapists and these murderers and those who are potential murderers. They have to be afraid of our anger, but more importantly, afraid of our action. Isolate them. And this is society which has to do. While we are nurturing and we are bringing up the new ones to be different kind of citizens. But this is a call to every South African. Yes, we'll start here in our campus, in our tertiary institutions, but it's a call for all South Africans. This is not the country we fought for. This is not, we wanted our people to be afraid to be looking at their shoulders when they are moving around. No. And we have the power and the capacity to change this. We really have to move from these ceremonies of celebration and commitments, but then nothing. You remember this girl, Mukwena, what's her name? Karabu, you remember? The nation was shaken as it is shaken with the women. Did it change much? Last year, last year, out of the anger and demand of civil society organizations, our government, our president, parliamentarians, everybody, yes, their policies. But you know what? The policies don't change. Action change. Action change. And this is what we have to do. And we have to do taking responsibility, all of us. It's not responsibility of some of us. It's not going to help if we start the finger pointing here. We have to take responsibility in different levels. And I want to finish saying, all of you, you are my children. All of you, some you are grandchildren because you are so young. <laughs> and really, it is where, with so much love, but at the same time, with so much pain, I want you to live and to live long. I want you to live with no fear. I want you to live while you are able to exercise the huge potential you have. This is your country. This is your society. You have to become agents of making this society healthy in which all, all of us, and I'm saying this to my children, to my grandchildren, make of this country, of this society, across Africa anyway, you have the power to make it take responsibility. <laughs>